love of desires fulfilled out of women. Number one thing that was made desirable for people. Nowadays, you want to buy a car, half naked woman standing next to it in, in the ad. Mm -hmm. What does beer have to do with women? Nothing. But they want to sell it, sell it through women. Mm -hmm. Use women as objects, right? The first desire that people have, multi, multi million dollar, billion dollar industry, pornography, selling what? Desire of man for woman. That's yeah. what it's selling, right? Uh, prostitution, desire for women. All these crimes come from what one thing? That obsession man has for women, women yeah. right? So, Hubu Shahawat bin an Nisa, Wal Banin, later on in life, you will desire to have sons rather than daughters. So Allah says, people love having sons. Wal Qanatir al Muqantara min al Dhahabi wal Fidda piled up heaps of wealth out of gold and silver, meaning savings, assets, big savings accounts, right? Lots of, lot, lots of assets to fall back on, right? And then a good ride. Well, Khayl al and branded horses. Now we don't have branded horses, we have branded horsepower, yeah. right? <laughs> but it's the same thing. Well, An'am wal harth, cattle. Cattle refers to your investments, because cattle in the old day was the investment. That you do, you, but it's career, really. What it's referring to, and harth, the return on your investment, the crop that comes out of that investment. These are things that people are obsessed with. Yeah. It, and if you find people, nowadays worldly people, that are not concerned with religion, what are they obsessed about? Look at what they're doing. Either it's women, desire, or it's money, right? Or it's their investment, their business, right? Or it's their car, their ride, it's a big thing, right? These are the things that people are obsessed with constantly. Allah says these things are there, they've been put inside of you, but then the question arises, why? Right? Allah says beautifully, ذَلِكَ مَتَاعُ الْحَيَاةِ dunya. All of that is utility, things to enjoy a little bit in worldly life. وَاللَّهُ عِنْدَهُ حُسْنُ الْمَآبِ And Allah, He has much better return than this. He has much better than this to offer. So if you think your desires are being challenged by the beauty of this woman or this wealth or this house, imagine the one who created this is saying, I've got much better than this, right? So actually these desires are there to fuel, if you really believe in the hereafter, to make you, help you imagine, man, if this is so tempting here, I should be far more tempted by what he has. But this is only going to be done for the one who believes in the unseen. Every Muslim says they believe in the unseen. Do they really believe in the unseen? Do they really believe Allah has something better to offer? Do they really believe the house that Allah has for them will have better specs, better square footage, better landscaping, better property value than what they're going after in this world. It's really, it's not just a thing you say and pass over. It's a state of mind to really believe that there's something better in the, le in the next life, right? And this is what it boils down to. These desires have been put in us to see. In the end, is your belief in the next life and better things in the next life stronger? Or would you rather take this now? To, to cap this off, Allah speaks about disbelievers, mm -hmm. but this is a human condition. All human beings, especially those who have weak iman, may Allah protect us all from it, or no, nobody's susceptible from it, no, or safe from it. One of the things He tells us very powerful is, okay? What this means is, no, you people are in love of rushing the things. <coughs> uh -huh. You want to get things quickly. Now the thing is, just to put this in perspective, if you run a business, right? and I'm trying to sell you some, or you're, or you're trying to sell me something, and I say, okay, I'll buy it from you for a hundred bucks, mm -hmm. but I'll pay you next month, okay? I'll pay you a hundred bucks, but next month. Another customer walks in and says, I'll pay you 90 bucks, but I'll pay you cash right now. You know what a good businessman will take? The hundred bucks next month or the $90 cash right now? He'll take the $90 cash. Yeah. Why? Because we need to, we love getting things immediately. We don't want to wait. You know, in business they say time is money. Mm -hmm. that, that attitude, want to get everything now. So now here's the picture. Allah, our Lord tells us, I will give you a house, I will fulfill every last one of your fantasies, every last one of them. There's nothing in your imagination that you desire that you will not get, everything you will get and more beyond your imagination. But it's not cash, it's credit. Yeah. If you want that, then you gotta wait. You can have some of this, this it's not like you're denying the world. It's not like you can't get married or can't have children, you can't have good life in, in this world too. You can have them, but I'll put restrictions on it for you. Mm -hmm. But if you want it unlimited, live this restricted life, and I'll give you unlimited. This is the sales pitch from Allah. An another sales pitch from Shaitan. He says, why you gotta wait? I'll get you this stuff right now. Enjoy it, live it up. You're young. When's this gonna come back? And when, you, when the Shaitan says this, and you forget 
that Allah is offering eternal youth. Allah is offering never-ending life. Allah is offering desires to the, to the nth. You forget all of that, all for what? One weakness? We rush to things. We yeah. can't wait. The Messenger of Allah told us, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, الدُّنْيَا سِجْنُ الْمُؤْمِنِ وَجَنَّةُ الْكَافِرِ Beautiful phrase. He says, this world is the prison of the believer and the paradise of the disbeliever. Mm -hmm. If you want to turn this world into paradise, then who are you? According to the Messenger's description, yeah. you don't really believe in the next. You might think you do, you might say you do, but you really don't. The, the other thing, just to add to this, زُيِّنَ لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا Listen to these words, they're so powerful, especially for believers in our time. Yeah. Worldly life was beautified for those who disbelieved. Worldly life is beautiful, but for who? Those who disbelieved. وَيَسْخَرُونَ مِنَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا And they will poke fun at those who believe. They will say, you guys are missing out on life. Look at you people. You gave up all this stuff, you, so for what? For some paradise or some... And they'll make fun of our paradise. And Allah's words came true. They, they run after dunya and they poke fun at the believers for running after what? The akhirah, right? Yeah. Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْا And those who guarded themselves. Now look at the words. He didn't say those who believed. He said those who guarded themselves. Those who feared the disobedience of Allah. They will be the ones who will be on top of the disbelievers on the day of resurrection on the day of standing. So the phrasing there is ittaqaw, which means they had taqwa, they protected themselves, they warded themselves off from these temptations. They're the ones who will have the upper hand in the day of on the day of resurrection. May Allah make all of us from them. Ameen.